All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this uh, after the dash video uh, for Thursday. Um, today was a rough one. I know you can't see me. I wish I had the little uh, uh, selfie light, but then maybe I'll pick up one. One of these days when I have more money in my bank account and can, can afford something like that. But as of right now, uh, this is what we got. Although I do have, um, yeah, I have something I could possibly bring. But anyway, so today was a was a very rough day. Um, I spent the first hour just trying to get orders that were even possibly worth it. It was, it was pretty horrendous. Um, the amount of $2.50 orders that came in. Granted, I started at like 2.30, I think is when I started. Um, between 2.30 and 5 o'clock, I made $7.75, I believe. $7.50, either way, either way. And then, um, I got two more orders pretty quickly behind each other. I had a, I had a dash that was set up from 2.30 to 5, and then I was going to start working from 5.30 to midnight. Or at least that's what I had in as far as the schedule. I was probably going to end, like, around 10, like I usually do. Um, but... Then I found that the area that I, I live in and where I usually work was open. So I, I changed my schedule to go there. Well, it took an hour with traffic to drive from where I was to where I needed to be. And granted, it's only 20 miles. So, um, yeah, there was that. So I'm going to pull over right here and do this. So, um... And then when I got up, got up here, um, I got a really good order from a Wawa once I got into town, but I had to like drive around in order to get to where I needed to be because I had to go like a back route through to avoid even longer commute. Um, so today I feel like I wasted a lot of time and a lot of money as far as gas goes. Um, but I got the order from Wawa and then I spent the next 45 minutes declining everything because it was anything from between 250 and 350. That's all I got was $2.50 orders and $3.50 orders and on average about 10 mile, a 10 mile drive one way. And it was taking me into the areas where I knew that I would have to drive back to get anywhere near anything. So I kept declining it because of that. And my biggest beef is with the fact that the, the, there's a restaurant, Chili's, the, the national brand Chili's, which people tip their, their servers at the restaurant when they eat there. But when it comes to DoorDash driving, they don't care. They just expect you to show up. And I don't know if they, they plan on giving cash tips. My experience is that it's very rare that anybody gives a cash tip anymore. Um, so I, I just assume that the, that's not the case. They just want free delivery. And usually the ones that want free delivery um, are usually the biggest pains in the ass about... Oh, do you have, why wasn't this at this temperature by the time it arrived and that kind of thing. They want you to go bend over backwards while they're not paying you for your services. So I just assume that that's the way it's going to be so I don't take those orders. Um, I, I made the choice after that and with the deliveries that I just got done doing that I was done for the night, I made about... 60 bucks no 70 i mean close to 70 dollars like 67 dollars or something like that and to me that was just that's a waste of time um uh considering what i've got going on in my brain as far as trying to make ends meet trying to my 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 logo brad dasher making ends meet 
I do this because I need to be able to pay my rent and my my electric bill and stuff like that in the middle of the summer when my wife's in education she doesn't work during the summer so she doesn't get paid she's already grossly underpaid um, I'm a musician who was out of work for a year who is getting paid but it's like it's almost like trying to get through the backlog um because I had to bend over backwards in order to make ends meet during that year when I had no work and people people get the wrong idea about what happens with us musicians when it comes to how um our work life works um yeah it seems like we don't have a whole lot we have to do but you are extremely wrong if you would make that assumption because I, I write music um, and while, while I'm writing I don't get paid to do that um, trying to book gigs um, just the personnel um, legwork of trying to do that I don't get paid for that time um, and stuff and then to finally be able to do the gig which can be booked months out so I had to wait to get paid for any of the effort that I put into it so there's a lot more that goes into it than what a lot of people think. So DoorDash is the good in-between thing, or at least it was. It's starting to become, it's so hit or miss in the area that I work. And the other thing too is there are so many people that work in this area that are taking those $2.50 orders. And I have a theory on that, but I'm not completely sure I haven't really spoken to anybody. Most of the people that I run into are older working DoorDash um, when I'm picking up because I tend to go to the better, the, the hoity-toity, uh, if, you, if you will, um, restaurants. But um, they tend to be older. and But the young guys that I see seem very young, um, as in like not legally able to possibly even do DoorDash young because uh, you have to be 18 because uh, of whatever um, but that's just my theory on that um, kids that are just happy to have anything you know so I don't know maybe it's my fault for putting all my eggs in one basket trying to make a living doing this um, I'm still waiting I'm still on the waiting list with Grubhub and Uber Eats has been hard as hell to get signed up for in my area and stuff so the, the oversaturation in this market where I live is kind of crazy considering it's like a blue collar area too but you know whatever um, I'm doing everything I can um, I don't know where if anybody's out there watching these videos where you guys are from I'd love to know um, how it works in your area um, realizing just how alone you are out there while doing all this stuff it can get very very daunting very quickly and that, that, seems, that seems to be where I run into on days like this where it just becomes daunting trying to navigate I mean I see it on YouTube there's tons of people that do videos about this kind of stuff this content door dashing and stuff and a lot of them are or is they're actually cheap thrills in order to get more subscribers so they can get more money from YouTube. And I, to me, there's so much fakeness that goes into all that that people are willing to sell their souls in that way that I just can't I can't deal with. Um, I I appreciate people like DoorDash Dad, um, who even in his trying to manipulated situation into making money through YouTube. I don't think that's his end game. I think he's really genuinely out there just trying to provide for his family and stuff. And um, people like Bentley Cooper, who he had a spat with that guy in particular, when it comes to like seeing seeing the videos he puts out, I ju it just turns me off to the whole idea of, of doing this. Because it's not about it's not about us regular people that are doing this. It's about him trying to think he's a superstar. Um, I don't know. It's... Right now, I feel like DoorDash is in a very dark place. 
uh, and is sending its drivers into a very dark place because I get there. And I try to find a positive spin on all this. And I'm someone who's used to driving long distances and days on end doing the touring stuff. But this is something else, man. It's dealing with restaurants and, and the little bit that I have to deal with and seeing the clock tick in, in the ways that it does. It, it messes with my brain and stuff. And I, I posted a video earlier today about being positive and stuff and you can see what happens after a door, door door dash shift sometimes is this where I just I'm trying to figure out what was the positives for me being out today yeah I made a couple more dollars than I had and that's the one positive that I guess I can get out of it but you know it's we're being driven into making minimum wage at this point which doesn't make a very good case for DoorDash to be a sustainable company and yet they've gone public and this is the thing that happens with any company that goes becomes publicly traded is you have shareholders that you're held to who uh, majority shareholders tend to be people who don't work within uh, the industry that they're invested in but they have the largest say in how things work and it's sad you know, I worked for the biggest company in the world, Walmart. And I remember day in, day out getting things from corporate offices where I was just like, you know, it'd be really funny if you guys came in here and saw how this works. Like, like not even ways of doing business. It was literally they would send us seeing the way that they think the stores laid out. When clearly they haven't reviewed blueprints. I had to do a, a, a reset of a store, not a remodel, but a reset, change the way the aisles were set up. And we had gotten the planogram thing for it, the, the, the chart that showed us what to do everything. They didn't account for the fact that we had a produce store in the middle of the coolers that they wanted us to put all the yogurt in, but we had to split the yogurt up because of the square footage that they had. So, you know, it's things like that. And DoorDash and their way are kind of doing that right now. Like I said, it's going into a really dark place. Once you publicly trade your company, you lose control. And it seems to be that way. Right now, they're, they've lost control and they're trying to figure out how to rein it back in. And I feel, it's, it kind of sucks because I feel like I should have started this a long time ago. Um, started working DoorDash a long time ago. I probably would have made a lot of money and would have been in, in a lot less stressful of a situation financially um, over the past COVID pandemic, the, the past year and a half. Considering that, you know, it was an essential thing because people couldn't go out and if you were working DoorDash, you probably made bank. Um, I came in towards the tail end of that and yeah, I made pretty good money during the holidays, but now it's... And the other thing I'm noticing is that DoorDash sends out more notifications trying to coax people into coming out and work because they know that they're, they're screwing over their employees. What they're doing is they're stacking it up to where no one's making money anymore. There's too many. There's too many of us out there. Um, we're all stealing from each other at this point. I, I don't know the market that you guys, you who's watching this is, is in, but to me, when I when I see, when I walk into a, a, a store, I drive into a place, I went to a Chipotle earlier, and there had to have been six cars that were DoorDash drivers just waiting for orders. And it's usually where I start the night. And clearly everybody else starts at night there. And I drove past and saw all these people sitting in their cars with their phones, Grubhub, whatever. And I said, okay, well, I got to go somewhere else. Because they're all starting in the same place. And no one's looking around noticing that they're all waiting in the same place. And they're all stealing from each other. In a way. You know, it's... And I can't I can't get mad at someone for hustling, trying to make, make a living. But... We're, we're also allowing the $2.50 orders to happen. That's what that whole DoorDash now, or decline now movement was about, from what I understand. I never participated in it. I was already declining orders. That made no sense. Um, the fact that there was a supposed movement that was made out of it never made really much sense to me. I was never part of that, never looked at any of the, the posts about any of it. I just heard about it through like DoorDash Dad or um, um, War Finance or whatever. And I just found it really just kind of like, well, 
you could do a movement, but the problem is, is that it's not a movement if not the whole force is behind it. And where I live, the, it seemed like people were willing to take whatever they could get. And it still seems like that. And because it's that way, once again, we're stealing from each other. We're, we're undercutting our worth. And it's something I deal with as a musician where I get undercut on price but I don't budge for my price because I know what I'm worth. I know what the time that I put in, what I put into my effort that I put out for each performance is and what that's worth. And I don't budge. So that's it for the night. Um, I was out for, it's nine o'clock right now. Started at 2.30. A little bit less than seven hours and I made maybe 70 bucks. So that's ten dollars an hour, less than ten dollars an hour for a Thursday, and I don't know if it was worth the mental toll, but alas, here we are. See you guys tomorrow, most likely.